considered to be one of the most escape-proof prisons in Europe, HM Prison Mays once held prisoners suspected of taking part in armed paramilitary campaigns during the troubles of the late 20th century. Today we look at 10 of the most infamous prisoners to spend time inside Northern Ireland's most infamous prison. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know if I missed anything at all in the video. I do read every single comment. Number 10, Jerry Kelly. During the Troubles, Jerry Kelly was a member of the Provisional Irish Republican Army, a paramilitary organisation that sought to end British rule in Northern Ireland and establish a united Ireland. In 1973, he was involved in a bombing operation that targeted the Old Bailey Courthouse in London and was arrested and subsequently sentenced to life imprisonment. He was part of the 1983 Mays Prison Escape, during which 38 IRA prisoners, including Kelly, managed to break out of the high-security prison. After his release from prison in 1989, as part of the Good Friday Agreement negotiations, Jerry Kelly transitioned to mainstream politics. He became a prominent member of Sinn Féin and has been elected as a member of the Legislative Assembly in Northern Ireland in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Over the years, he has been involved in various political and peace-building initiatives in Northern Ireland. Number 9. Bobby Sands. Best known for his role as a hunger striker and also his death in prison, which had a significant political and social implication during the Troubles in Northern Ireland, Sands grew up in a nationalist Catholic community. He became involved in the Republican movement and joined the IRA in the early 1970s. Sands was arrested in 1976 and later convicted for possession of firearms. Whilst in prison, he and other Republican prisoners engaged in protests against the British government's policy of treating them as criminals rather than political prisoners. In 1981, Sands initiated a hunger strike in May's prison to protest the removal of special category status for political prisoners. The hunger strike was a form of protest where prisoners refused to eat until their demands were met, and Sands, as the first participant, began his hunger strike on the 1st of March 1981. Despite international appeals for intervention and attempts to find a resolution, the British government, led by Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, refused to concede to the prisoners' demands. Sands' health deteriorated rapidly as it, and he died on May the 5th, 1981, after 66 days on hunger strike, with his death having a profound impact both locally and internationally. The hunger strikes continued after Sands' death and eventually a resolution was reached. Number 8. Liam Averill Another prisoner who was implicated in the Mays prison escape of 1983, Republican double killer Averill escaped the Mays prison dressed as a woman. Serving life sentences for two murders committed in 1994, he benefited from a secret amnesty given to 18 on-the-run IRA prisoners to cement the peace process. Averill fled the prison during a Christmas party for Republicans, their wives and families. He was convicted of shooting dead 40-year-old Alan Smith, a former UDR soldier, and another Protestant, John McCloy, in the village of Garvar in April 1994. He famously walked in disguise through the May's prison gates without being checked and was last seen disappearing into the night through the visitor's car park. The escape, which was caught on video, became one of the most daring in the prison's history, and Averill later reappeared in 2014 for a court appearance and a drink drive fine. He was disqualified from driving for 12 months and ordered to pay £30 in costs. Number 7. Billy Wright. Northern Irish loyalist, paramilitary and the leader of the Loyalist Volunteer Force, Wright formed the LVF in 1996 after a split within the UVF. Wright was known for his extreme views and was involved in numerous sectarian attacks against the Catholic nationalist community. The LVF under his leadership was responsible for several acts of violence including shootings and bombings with Wright and his paramilitary group being implicated on the 20th, 
On December 27, 1997, Billy Wright was assassinated inside the Mays prison by members of the Irish National Liberation Army. His killing was part of the ongoing violence between Loyalist and Republican factions within the prison, and Wright's death intensified tensions within the Loyalist community, leading to further violence and reprisal attacks. His legacy remains controversial, with some viewing him as a Loyalist figurehead and others condemning his involvement in violence and sectarianism. Terrianism. Number 6. Johnny Adair Adair rose to prominence after becoming a prominent figure in the Ulster Defence Association. Associated with the C Company unit of the UDA, based in the Shank Hill Road area of West Belfast, Adair and his associates were involved in various acts of violence and sectarian attacks. In 2002, internal tensions within the UDA led to Adair being expelled from the organisation, with this internal conflict resulting in a violent feud between Adair's factions and the mainstream UDA. After many bombings and paramilitary-style shootings within Belfast, Adair was subsequently arrested and imprisoned in the Isle of Man on charges relating to directing terrorism. After serving part of his sentence, he was released in 2005 and relocated to Ayrshire, Scotland under strict conditions. Number 5. Sam Skelly McCroy Another member of the Ulster Defence Association, McCroy formed a racist skinhead head gang in his youth. Francisco Notarantonio became his first victim after being shot dead at his home, an event that was set up by a British army agent to prevent the murder of Freddy Scapatisi. His next targets were provisional Irish Republican Army leaders Brian Gillen and Martin Lynch. However, he was ambushed by the British Army on the border between South and West Belfast. McCroy was arrested and received a considerable prison sentence, eventually becoming the UDA officer in command at the prison. After release, he was accused of involvement in a gun attack on a bar. In in August 2000 at the start of a Loyalist feud. Number 4. Michael Stone One of the more famous inmates held at the Mays prison during the Troubles, Michael Stone was a member of the Ulster Defence Association, or UDA for short. One of the most infamous incidents involving Michael Stone occurred on March 16, 1988, when he carried out a gun and grenade attack at a funeral in Belfast. The funeral was for three provisional Irish Republican Army members who had been killed in Gibraltar. Stone entered the funeral with the intent of targeting Republican mourners, throwing grenades and firing shots, resulting in the deaths of three people and injuring many others. Following the attack, Stone was apprehended, tried and convicted for multiple counts of murder and other offences. He was sentenced to life in prison. However, as part of the Good Friday Agreement, Stone was released early. Number 3. Kieran Nugent Born in 1958 in Belfast, Nugent became known for his involvement with the Provisional Irish Republican Army before being arrested and sentenced in 1976. During his time in prison, he and other Republican prisoners refused to wear the standard prison uniform as a form of protest against their classification as criminals rather than political prisoners. The prisoners considered themselves to be engaged in a political struggle and they demanded recognition as prisoners of war. Nugent, as a leader of this protest, began wearing only a blanket to highlight his status as a political prisoner and this act marked the beginning of the blanket protest in the Mays prison. Protest later escalated into the dirty protest during which prisoners refused to wash and smeared their cells with excrement to emphasise their demands. Kieran Nugent was released from prison in 1986 and remained politically active but moved away from the IRA and became involved in left wing politics. Number 2. Brendan Hughes Born on February 10, 1948 in Belfast, Hughes became involved in Republican activities at a young age and joined the Provisional Irish Republican Army in the 1970s. Hughes gained notoriety for his involvement in the Mays prison protests acting as the IRA's Belfast Brigade commanding officer. He was a close associate of Bobby Sands, the first hunger striker to die during the protest, with himself going on hunger strike and spending 53 days without food before the strike was called off. After his release from prison in 1986, Brendan Hughes remained active in Republican politics. However, in later years, he became critical of the direction of the movement was taking, especially after the signing of the Good Friday Agreement 
agreement in 1988. Hughes believed that the compromises made in the peace processes contradicted the principles of the Republican cause. Number one, Larry Marley. Perhaps best known for his involvement in planning the May's prison escape in 1983, Marley, in a meticulously orchestrated operation, helped 38 Republican prisoners escape from the prison. Marley played a crucial role in organising the escape, which involved smuggling in weapons, overpowering prison guards and using a hijacked food delivery truck to leave the prison. After the May's escape, Marley continued his involvement in Republican activities. However, his life was cut short on April 3, 1987, when he was assassinated by the Ulster Volunteer Force. Oh, that makes no sense. The May's prison escape remains one of the most audacious and high-profile events of the conflict, and Larry Marley's role in planning it is remembered as a significant episode in the history of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Thanks for watching this video on the top 10 most infamous prisoners held in the May's prison. Please throw a like on the video to support the ongoing series, comment down below if you think I missed any important information, and subscribe for more top list videos coming this month.